Well, we finally have some information as to what to expect with the brand new 2025 Cummins engine in these Ram HD trucks. I'm gonna break it down for you guys and give you my opinion as a diesel mechanic for whatever that's worth. Welcome back, I'm Alex. A couple weeks ago, we had some fun speculating about a potential 7.2 liter Cummins engine ending up in these Ram HD trucks. That is not happening, not anytime soon at least. Mopar Insider is reporting that we will see another 6.7 engine in this famous Cummins Ram pairing. And well, there are some pretty significant mechanical upgrades, which we will dive into today. And speaking of today, we're up in Northern Ontario with this very nice looking Ram 2500 Laramie in my good friend Travis's shop, a fellow diesel mechanic, a great fellow. In fact, he actually runs Wicker's Truck and Trailer Repair and he has, well, happily given me his personal shop for the afternoon so we can break down exactly what's happening with this new Cummins engine. This updated Cummins engine is set to make its debut on the 10th of January at the Detroit Auto Show, which I am very much hoping to attend. First of all, it does seem like it's confirmed that Cummins is releasing a single engine, ditching the standard output and high output engine options. This single engine option is gonna be putting out a little bit more power than the current high output, pushing 430 horsepower and 1,075 pound-feet of torque. So we're gonna get an additional 10 more horsepower. Now, yes, it's only an extra 10 more horsepower of this new Cummins engine, but you could only get the high output Cummins engine in a Ram 3500. So these 2500 Ram pickup trucks are going to see a massive power increase, an extra 60 horsepower as well as 200 in 25 pound-feet of torque, which is a significant bump, as well as getting the new ZF8 speed. So these new Ram 2500s in 2025 are gonna be pretty heavily upgraded. With those increased power figures, we are gonna see an increased price tag. Currently, a standard output Cummins engine in a 2500 costs about $9,800 US. And in 2025, that price tag will go up to $12,600, about the same price as a current high output Cummins engine. Getting down to the nitty gritty, the mechanical differences we're gonna see in 2025. The first one that caught my eye is that Cummins is going back to a cast iron block. In 2019, Cummins went with a compacted graphite iron block, which is a stronger material than cast iron. But most importantly, in my opinion, it is lighter because these Cummins engines are heavy beasts. So being that this engine is already the heaviest engine in the segment, it is interesting to see that Cummins did go back with a heavier cast iron block design. I know there were some potential issues or some issues discussed with the compacted graphite iron block introduced in 2019, particularly with the block potentially flexing, taking out main bearings. I personally didn't think that was much of an issue, but seeing that Cummins went back to a traditional cast iron block may indicate that they felt indeed it was a weak point. My second thought is that if indeed these compacted graphite iron blocks were potential weak points, why not just reinforce it and keep the weight savings of these CGI blocks? I mean, this current Cummins with a CGI block has a reduction of about 74 pounds, which is a pretty significant reduction. So it is interesting to see why Cummins went back with a cast iron block. Maybe it's just cheaper in terms of manufacturing process to solve the problem. The next change that caught my eye is Cummins is apparently going back to the well with a CP4-like Bosch fuel pump. And before we all kind of clutch our pearls here, oh, CP4, apparently this is supposed to be a completely redesigned fuel pump that is derived off the CP4, but we'll have to wait and see how good the performance is and really see what the specs are of this new pump before we get too ahead of ourselves. Some of you guys may remember, this isn't the first time that a fifth gen HD Ram truck has tasseled with the old Bosch CP4 fuel pump. And you might ask yourself, Alex, why on earth would Ram and Cummins wanna go back to a Bosch CP4-like fuel pump? And the reason is quite simple because it produces a lot more fuel pressure. And higher fuel pressure means a more atomization of the fuel, a cleaner burn, and critically, less emissions, as well as adding more power. And so that's the reason why I imagine Ram Cummins is looking to move away from the CP3 pump because the CP3 just cannot produce as much pressure as a CP4 fuel pump can. One thing that did not get updated is the hydraulic roller lifters. Traditionally, 
in these Cummins engines. They have used a tried and true solid flat tap and lifter, but in 2019, Cummins went with a more modern hydraulic roller lifter, and they have been more or less in the crosshairs ever since because of the reported lifter failures that these engines are seemingly having. I thought there was a pretty good probability that with this engine update, we would see Cummins try and address the valve train, but it does seem like it's being left untouched for the most part. And well, a couple months ago, I took a deep dive into the potential lifter failures of this Cummins engine, and I found it very interesting that the commercial ISB engines still run a solid flat tappet style lifter. So it'll be really interesting to see if these new Cummins engines do indeed still have some of these lifter failures that are being reported. On the topic of Cummins addressing issues, the heater grids on these engines are a thing of the past. Cummins is gonna be putting glow plugs in the 2025 engines moving forward, which they say should help with cold starts. Uh, we'll have to see about that. I don't know, Cummins, glow plugs, in my experience with 6.0 power strokes and their glow plug, or uh, yeah, glow plugs. Thanks. My personal truck has one bad glow plug and it starts like a bag every time. Never had that with my Cummins. But critically, as you guys probably know, the famous heater grid bolt taken out engines, essentially what would happen is there was a nut or a bolt on the heater grid that would rot off and essentially just fall into the engine, taking out, I believe, the number six cylinder. And it was a pretty well-documented issue, so it's nice to see Cummins addressing that, and we don't have to worry about that moving forward with the 6.7 engines. Apparently, we should also be seeing an updated cylinder head, updated injectors, updated and beefed up fuel rail, as well as an updated intake manifold, helping with airflow, ideally letting more boost easily into the engine. Speaking of boost, we're also gonna be seeing an updated turbo. It is reported that this engine 2025 is gonna get a new Holset VGT Turbo, a 10 blade setup, which should ideally help with throttle response, more boost, especially when under load. Now, ideally, in my opinion, I'd like to see if it also gets a new VGT actuator, because I know for a fact that we change a ton of VGT actuators. They are prone to fail. Um, I guess I shouldn't say prone to fail, but they are known to fail, and it is a pretty big job to do so not inexpensive either they are a very expensive part so it will be interesting to see if with this new turbo we get a new vgt actuator which i'd be a big fan of so as you guys can see this new cummins engine coming in 2025 is simply not a software update adding 10 more horsepower we are getting some pretty significant hardware upgrades ideally addressing some weak points moving forward now the last engine update that caught my eye involves maintenance cummins traditionally has a spin-on oil filter but they are going to a top loaded cartridge style oil filter as well as fuel filters which i quite like as well i know i work on a lot of detroit diesel engines and those engines have their fuel and oil cartridge filters side by side it makes for very easy maintenance so ideally this is going to make life a lot easier for the mechanics so i think this cummins update in 2025 was much needed i mean we can all look at the ram sales figure not that great they seem to be struggling especially with these hd trucks and i've been critical of these 2500 specifically in the past i just feel like they're not competitive in comparison to both ford and gm um, but adding an extra 60 horsepower, an extra 225 pound-feet of torque, as well as that monster ZF Powerline eight-speed transmission in behind this heavy beast of an engine is going to make these trucks feel like completely new animals. Now, I do think Cummins was listening to the consumer because I originally thought that maybe, just maybe Cummins would go after Ford's high output power stroke, try and maybe beat their figures, go above, 1200 pound feet of torque but cummins didn't in fact they added almost no power an extra 10 horsepower instead they tried to fix some of the weaknesses on the engine giving ideally the consumer a better stronger engine not necessarily increasing power figures to the moon like we have been seeing lately with this diesel segment now lastly before we get out of here for you guys who've stuck around this long there has been a little bit of a sniff about a potential 6.4 hemi engine update and I could actually see this being true because we know that the 6.4 Hemi is gonna be sticking around for a little bit longer. Chrysler has confirmed that, Stellantis, whoever, they have confirmed that that is happening. And in order to keep that gas engine competitive against say Ford's 7.3 Godzilla, it would not surprise me to have Chrysler Stellantis go in there and tweak the power figures, add a little more power, maybe a little more efficiency to make that engine 
competitor for the coming years. So pretty exciting stuff. I'm excited to get my hands on a new 2025 Cummins and get it on my towing loop to see how it compares to the Ford as well as the GM's Duramax. But if you guys did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. If you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. And well, come on in, Travis. Bring come grid on. heaters back. Yes, Travis is, is all about the grid heater, not the glow plugs, but nor here nor there. These suck. Enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video. Love you all.